what if? What if I told you that there's an island in the middle of the South Atlantic Ocean that has dense jungle reaching high into the clouds and then transforms into a barren desert landscape before huge volcanic cliffs dive straight into the deep blue ocean? This island, which is home to only 4,000 people, is St. Helena, and is one of the most remote island settlements on Earth. For the next 11 days, we will use the power of the wind to take us from the west coast of Africa to this jewel of the South Atlantic. This is our story of our first leg sailing across the Atlantic Ocean. Final preparations. Oh, oh sh computer's in there. Um, <laughs> throw your computer around. Yes. Um, that's probably why the screen's broken. We are leaving Wallace Bay for St. Helena. St. Helena, here we come. Yep. We've been hanging out here for about the last two weeks. Ready to go. And I'm ready to sail to where it's warm because it's so cold here on the coast of Namibia. But it's time to go. Whiskey Jack! <laughs> Skylark and Whiskey Jack, St. Helena bound! We'll be, we'll be right behind you! Here we go. Yeah, let's go! This stretch of the South Atlantic is said to have some of the best conditions a sailor could ask for. Tropical cyclones do not exist, squalls are rare, and the route is dominated by steady southeast trade winds. After having just crossed the Indian Ocean, we were excited for some chilled downwind sailing. Oh, it's beautiful. Those are our friends on the sailing cat, uh, Whiskey Jack, and we've been hanging out with them since Cape Town. Yeah. We're gonna sail together to St. Helena. Although I think they're gonna be a lot faster than us. This is it, our course to steer all the way to St. Helena. We have 1,214 nautical miles to go. Day one. Well, it is night number one. Sailing from Namibia to St. Helena. Doing pretty well actually. The the wind was supposed to be pretty much nothing tonight, but we've got a good ten to thirteen knots on the beam and we're doing anywhere from four to six knots. Yeah, it's about uh two fifteen in the morning. We've got another forty five minutes to go and the gym's gonna come on. Our friends Whiskey Jack are just a couple miles behind us. That's all to report for night number one. All is well. Hey Chris, I made us some smoothies. Oof. Avocado, banana, yogurt, almond milk. Thank you. You're welcome. Over the straw even. Yes. Oof. I'm so worried it's gonna fall over into the sink. Did you just tell on YouTube that we have bananas on our boat? What's wrong with that? So if we sink. Bananas on a boat are bad luck. We have lots of bananas. Don't brag about it. We're in for a treat tonight. It's Dominican Republic night. It's Dominican Republic. Yes. Yeah, it starts with D in our A to Z Atlantic. Yeah, we have yeah. a mango avocado salad, lots of chilies, extra spicy. And we have four crayfish per person. And I'll put garlic butter 
stuff with garlic butter and fried. And in the meantime, we are sailing, a cruising downwind right now. We've got a solid, let's see that, 15 to 20 downwind and conditions are very, very nice. Jen, what night is this? Oh, night number four. This is the fourth, fourth, fourth night at sea. You can remember it, which night it is by which letter of our Atlantic A to Z cuisine. Okay, so I don't think we ever explained the theme, the cooking theme for this trip, but it's A to Z across the Atlantic, so each dinner has to be themed. So like the night number one was A, and that was Algeria. So Jen made a uh, couscous. And then B, Brazil, we had uh, beef. And then last night C for China, uh, Jen made a Sichuan pepper pork. That's nice, Dominican Republic. And that's going to go on across the entire South Atlantic. Hey Chris, come check this out. What? The one on the tails. Oh. Stuffed with garlic butter, fried in garlic butter. And you see we're using paper plates. It's because our generator is giving us some grief, so we can't make more water. We're trying to save water for dishes, so what we do is we been using paper plates and then we line um, we line our bowls with plates before we eat and these are biodegradable we can throw those overboard so we put our meals in the paper plate liner which looks somewhat trashy but it saves us a lot of water yeah. how much water do we have left that's not bad Oh my gosh. So we have gosh. four tails each in garlic butter, plus a salad with avocado, mango, garlic, chilies, black beans, red onions, tomatoes. <sighs> Please enjoy. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you. That looks incredible. Thank you. Ooh. You never disappoint with the meals. Oh, well, thank you. Here you go. Thank you. We're about five or six days in now uh, on our passage to St. Helena. Uh, it's been a little bit sporty the last 24 hours. Nothing too crazy, but kind of big swell. Maybe 20, 25 knots of wind. But that's gonna be dying down today. It's gonna be getting quite weak, so I'm trying to decide what to do. Um, right now we're going very much northwest. Uh, of course, heading kind of like that. Not, we're not on our run line. And that was to get the bigger swell directly behind the boat, which is now shifted and is on the quarter and we're rolling a lot anyways. So we might jive back um, to a port tack, head more on a direct run line to St. Helena. But the reason why we came north is now that this wind's getting weaker, we should be able to go on a westerly, west-northwest -north, west course and have it more on the beam rather than directly behind, which we do better at that angle. It's very difficult to sail this boat when it's dead downwind, especially in light winds. So what I'm thinking though, we'll do the jibe, see how we do, if the sails are flogging. If they're flogging really bad in the lighter winds, then I think we might set our downwind pole. And just go dead downwind. that on my forehead, but it's sweat, it is finally hot. We are getting back to the tropics and it feels good. Um, it was so cold in Namibia and that whole coastline. But yeah, we got a down one pulled up. Cruising along nicely at five to six knots, pretty much downwind, sail with the pole 
doesn't really flog too much, so it's much, much more pleasant. Yeah, it's a nice afternoon. So we're about to uh, cross the Prime Meridian and enter the Western Hemisphere. So we're about to cross the Prime Meridian. Uh, we're about to cross the Prime Meridian into the Western Hemisphere. So in a, a few minutes, we're going to cross into the Western Hemisphere. In a few minutes, we're going to enter the Western Hemisphere. Uh, you can also see on the map, the Prime Meridian is here. Currently, we're here. And we're going to be very close to enter. I'm not far from St. Helena. 10, 9, 7, 5, 2. our last day at sea and tomorrow we will be arriving in St. Helena and we've got the Jinnaker up right now cruising downwind I think uh, in about an hour we'll take that down and jive put the Genoa back out on the pole and you should be able to cruise straight to St. Helena Being that Jen and I are usually only a crew of two, oftentimes when things go wrong, it's difficult to get it on film as all hands are needed. This is one of those cases. Just as Jen was bringing up buttered chicken curry for our I India themed dinner, we heard a huge tearing sound and looked up to see our poor Jenniker nearly shredded in half. Well, I just finished our Indian dinner. I was bringing it up to Chris and we heard a huge rip and our Beautiful Jenniker is now toast. It's completely shredded. Thankfully, we managed to wrestle the remaining sail onto the deck in under a minute. Jenniker's gone. He's dead. They don't last that long, though. They're probably, it was probably it's already quite old. Well, it's 12 years old. Yes. I mean, it was only eight or nine knots of apparent wind, but one flog, and we just heard it. I wonder if it would have just broke on the next time we used it, like it was gonna happen. Oh, for sure. So it's not yeah. like we didn't use it today. No, it's, I'm glad it didn't happen in the middle of the night. So, Damn. It's so annoying. It's like such a nice sail for the Atlantic, where it's so light. It really sucks. Oh. We heard it and the, uh, it was one little flog, flap of the sail, and we just hear And we both, Jen was like, oh, is that a rip? And I look out and the whole thing is ripped 90% of the way down. I'm amazed that I could still actually furl it in like most of the way. Pretty bumped. You know, I was just thinking about how we should maybe leave it up all night and sail with it through the night. I'm just happy it happened literally like an hour before sunset. Slapping a lot and we're used to that. It's normal or relatively normal, but it just had one too many flogs and it ripped all the way down the top, almost completely in half. And thankfully it didn't, otherwise it would have been in the water. We wanted to we film managed. it, but um, we figured it was better just to get it down onto the boat. Yeah. We kind of jump into action and forgot about the camera. But it's done now. It's just a Jinniker. We don't need it. We, we don't really need it. It's got to be interesting. And it's the last day of the passage and nothing has really happened. It's been pretty uh, tame. So one bad thing has to happen, I guess. Bananas on a boat are bad luck. We have lots of bananas. Don't mm. brag about it. It's the bananas. <gasps> I told you, it's the bananas on board. No, it's not. We have bananas on board. I think I mentioned this in an earlier video. Bananas on a boat are bad luck. And now our Jenniker ripped. It's the bananas, Jen. No, they're in the freezer though. It's, it's the bananas. Count. They're not even looking at the Jenniker. It's the bananas. I'm, no. throwing, I'm throwing them overboard tonight when you're sleeping. Please don't. I love I, them for the smoothies. I'm going to. No. <laughs> Jennifer and the Jenniker. Anyways, 80 nautical miles to go to St. Helena. We'll be there tomorrow morning. Can't wait. Land? 
Toronto. Jen just woke me up from my shift, and, and as you already know, land. It's St. Helena. Oh, it's so exciting. And there's a beautiful sunrise going on behind me. I'm just trying to pinpoint how I feel right now because I'm very, I'm super excited. And I finally, I realized that it feels like Christmas morning as a little kid. It's early in, early in the morning and you're tired. Yeah, that's just what it feels like right now, Christmas morning. said it before but I'm gonna say it again there's really no better feeling than making landfall in a remote place like this after you've been at sea for a while especially here in the middle of the South Atlantic Ocean just a random rock these moments right now are the moments that I think I'll remember for the rest of my life for sure Cheers. Cheers. Uh, 1,200 miles, nine days, St. Helena. St. Helena. Mm. Next time on Outside Watch, we get checked into St. Helena. Oh, well done. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's calm in here. And we start exploring the insane hikes around the island.